Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome in to tonight's event. I'm your host, Tyler Pyburn. We have got a fun one lined up for you. A lot of cool stuff going to be showcasing tonight. Now, the season, it is, in fact, officially underway with the Seahawks sitting at a 500 with a 3-3 three three record to this point. But really, all those games were non-conference. Nothing but CAA action starts off on Saturday at Trask. That's going to be going up against Drexel. Now, although the season is, in fact, already underway, we really want to use tonight's program as a way to kick off the season. We still have an incredible night lined up, as I mentioned. Now, as you can imagine, you're going to hear from the coaches, meet the team, but we also have a little bit of fun in store for you as well. We'll give you a sneak peek behind the curtain to really see how the team is approaching the season and what life has been like in a, an interesting year, to say the least. Now, we also want to invite you to join in on the fun. Now, if you're watching the video on the page, feel free to scroll just below the player window and let us know what you're excited for with this season. Now, let, let's have some fun. I'm going to start things off by asking you a question. Just let us know where you're tuning in from. Are you home? What city, what town are you in right now? Let us know. We're, we're curious to see where folks are watching tonight. Now, speaking of being a part of the action, while well, you know we can't be at Trask this season in person, you can still be really part of the fun by purchasing a fan cutout. These things, I'm sorry, every time I see them, I just have to chuckle. You probably see them during the MLB or NFL seasons, but th these things are really just a lot of fun. You can submit a picture of yourself, your dog, your neighbor, friend, grandma, you name it, as you see there. Lots of fun there. Now, there's really three different levels that you can purchase, each with its own perks. You can purchase, uh, you know, that right there on the page itself. If you scroll below the video player, it's right there, um, just below the chat window, actually. You'll see it where you can go ahead and purchase. It's right on uncwsports.com slash STS. Now, while you're there, you can also make a donation to the Sustain the Seahawks campaign, which is aimed at helping our athletic program survive and thrive during this challenging year. Now, two ways that you can donate to help can really just support the entire athletics program. First, you can log on to uncwsports.com slash Seahawk Club or give us a call right now at 910-962-2731 right here. Again, 910-962-2731. So with all that in mind, what do you say we get the night started? Now, Karen Barefoot is in her fourth year as head coach. Over the last three years, she's brought her winning ways to the program, tallying up 40 wins to this point, not including so far this year. Now, let's hear what she has to say about the upcoming season. Well, hello. Welcome, everybody. Mike Vaccaro here alongside Karen Barefoot, head coach of the Seahawks. Fourth season now here for the Seahawks women. And uh, Coach, Obviously, it's uh, strange times right now, the pandemic going on, COVID-19, and, and nothing is normal. For you, for your staff and your team, what was it like dealing with some of the adversity to kind of get things going and, and get a season started this year? Well, you know, I just credit the staff and, and the support staff. I mean, you have to all kind of come together and, and figure it out. It is different. And uh, the true her heroes are our student athletes. I mean, they're going through this pandemic. They're trying to figure it out. Um, they have to be disciplined and, and, you know, be six, you know, feet apart, you know, wash hands, you know, things that we try to teach them on the floor, being disciplined. They have to do things off the court so we can have a reason for a season. So just really proud of them. Biggest challenge in all of this. I mean, again, I'm sure you're seeing different teams go on pause and, and things kind of halted for a while. What's, what's the biggest challenge with all this? Um, that you don't know what's going to happen, that anything could change like this. And I think that for us, we just try to do everything we can so, again, we can have a season. And then also, um, you know, their academics are important. So, you know, it's student athlete. And so for us, it's just making sure that they're getting what they need um, and, and making that about their journey why they're here. And so, um, you know, just credit staff, support staff like Shannon Peace, who's done a tremendous job with our student athletes. We just got a 3.21. Um, this semester and um, I mean those are things you get proud of as a coach I mean at the end of the day to see them walk across that stage and, and feel like we've given them the tools to be successful in life I mean the reason why they're here is the education part well a lot of new faces here as well when you look at this team you know you look at the roster and some of the holdovers gone now you're leading scorers so uh, the new faces how has it been to kind of get them acclimated to this program to your system and and what you expect from them well, I think that they've done a tremendous job just kind of coming in here and um, listening to the coaching staff. I, I think the staff has done a tremendous job getting them ready for the season. And I think that, um, you know, they're winners. They come from successful programs. And there's a reason why we have the top-ranked recruiting class in our conference, 48th overall. 
um, is because they they know how to win and they know what it takes to win. So I think them coming in here to try to adjust of how things are going to be is important because they, they it, it was an easy transition. Our freshmen, you wouldn't think they were freshmen. They're fearless. Um, they come in with that mindset of, I have nothing to lose and I would love to contribute and, and just be a part of this program. And they have been tremendous. And our transfers coming in, they've done a great job blending in with you know, some veterans like Carol Ann, you know, Abusek, who's CA, who's had an, having an unbelievable all-conference year. I mean, she should be considered even maybe player of the year with her leadership, not just her basketball ability. Yeah, ladies like that, the new players coming in again, and the experience that you're getting right now, how do you see that, you know, contributing and playing into the role that they'll have come CA play as well? I think it's huge. I think the CA women's basketball is having an unbelievable year. The winning percentage in non-conference so far, for, so far with all our teams have, have been unbelievable. So I'm just happy that we're competing and we got to get ready for a tough CA battle. It's going to be an unbelievable year. Hopefully we can get through it and do our part so we can have a season. Yeah, and what do you expect? You know, obviously when you look at the conference season, it's going to be back-to-back -back games yeah. against the same opponent. So very little adjustments made yeah. from a Saturday to a Sunday. How do you see that playing out from that standpoint? That's why I say the support staff is so important. Coach K, our strength and conditioning coach, has done a tremendous job with our ladies. It's going to come down to fitness, too. It's going to come down to little things like that. When you're playing back-to-back, -back, you know, the, the, everybody's important. You know, the depth is going to be important. So, I mean, we got to be ready. And we're every day just trying to prepare our team to be, you know, ready for battle, be in the best sh shape possible. I even heard Coach Siddle talk about that before, and, and, you know, several times with his team. But, you know, we're trusting that we're doing our part and also basketball getting a lot of reps up, you know, really scrimmaging more than we have in the past because you have to strategically think that way so they can be ready for back-to-back -back games so we can depend on everybody to come off that bench and give us something. And so I'm looking forward to it. As we always talk about and always know, as a head coach, sometimes you're only as good as your staff that you have behind you. And you have a nice staff of very, you know, some new players, new coaches here, but a veteran presence, obviously, in Teton Martin as well. What can you tell us about your assistant coaches? Um, they, they're tremendous, all of them. And starting with the top with uh, Tina Martin and, and the way that she's, um, you know, understands she's had, what, 30 years of experience and been very successful at Delaware and, and knows how to win. And so it's great to be able to have a friend, not just a coach beside me, that can help me prepare them on and off the floor. You know, whether it's X and O's, academics, it doesn't matter. I mean, she brings that wealth of experience. And then you talk about Matt Lynch, who, who I just, I get so hyped when I say his name. I mean, I've seen him from the sideline on the men's side. He's been a video coordinator. He's been a director of ops. He's coached men and women, basketball. And I love what he brings to the table. His passion. He's super intelligent. I just love his mindset. So I like the fact that he can give a lot to this program. And then you have Jocelyn Floyd who is incredible. I mean, she, you talk about one of the best ever defensive player in NCAA history. She holds all the records when she played um, at Duquesne, and, and now she comes in, and she worked for my former assistant coach at Old Dominion, Tom McConnell, who was a head coach now at IUP, is that she worked for him. So I know what to expect with her with a defensive mindset. She comes in here. She has a lot to offer. She's great with scouts, so, and she's younger, and she can relate to him. So there's a great blend, uh, and not just experience, but what they can bring to the table. So I'm, I'm just super excited about our staff. Again, for you, your, your fourth year here, obviously you bring a lot of energy to this program and what it's done over the years. What in your mind has, has changed and developed with this program? And, and in your mind, what is this program now four years into it? Well, you know, my last name, Barefoot, I always want to put a footprint everywhere I go. So I was hoping to put the footprint, the blueprint of the teal collar mentality to this program. So I think that everybody now knows across the country, recruits, everybody, what kind of student athlete we're looking for in our program and credit our staff and, and, and just trying to implement how we want to play. And how we want to play is we want to play hard. We want to get after it. Like right now, we're 34th in the country in rebounding, you know, with a young team and in new faces that that says they're playing hard. Rebounding is about heart. It's about, you know, being tenacity, you know, just all over the boards. And on both ends, and I'm so proud of them because they're bringing that. Are they perfect? No, they're not, but they play extremely hard. They play together, you know, they make the selfless play. Like the other night we played UNCG, you know, they found a way to come out of that locker room and find a way to win and come back. And that's a big deal against a team that won the championship last year. So, 
you know, it's just exciting that, you know, I think fourth year coming up that, you know, now we're kind of having new faces come in that they understand how we want to play. And Coach Martin's been with me from day one. And then, of course, you know, Jenny DeGraff coming in as a director of operation who was here as a student athlete. You know, she, you know, coached her. So she knows what to expect, too. So, you know, it, it's very exciting right now. I think that um, we're just trying to win every day. I, I think that, you know, we're just trying to have that mindset of, of why not us? This could be a banner year. Let's just try to do our part to make sure that we can have a season. And that's the part we keep talking about, you know, doing our end and making sure that, you know, everybody's staying safe. And so kind of have our own little bubble here so we can have a season because it'd be awesome to be able to um, put a banner up and something that everybody's waiting for. Well, you talk about the bubble because of that, you know, no fans of the games this season for, for the most part here. So folks watching it here, uh, what are they missing out on? How much are you missing them, I guess, in the environment that they create in Trash Coliseum? It is, it, it is definitely weird. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you that because I know I draw energy from them. Um, and it's something that you had to get used to. But I love the cardboard. Um, yeah, I wish more people would do it because it's kind of like you look out there and you almost feel like it's them. You're like, oh, my gosh, that, no, that's a cardboard, you know, <laughs> cut out. But, um, you know, we, want, we know people are watching. We know people have sent emails and texts. And I share that in the locker room with the players. People are so excited still. They're following us. They're pumped up about the season. And they know what those student athletes are going through. So everybody's like, you know, you got this. Let's get through it. Because we will get through it and get on top, you know, in the long run. It, it, it will happen. But right now, we got to play for the letters across our jersey. You know, our fans, our alums, our students, everybody. You know, and I always say the, the name on the back of your jersey, your family. We know family's watching. We, we know everybody's watching us. And so I think for us, it's great to be able to just understand that and then go on the floor and just fight 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 for every possession and that's kind of been our motto is it's just you know let's know at the end of the day that we did everything we could to, to win every possession well fans watching from afar right now but a good start to this season conference season right around the corner coach wish you the best of luck here the rest of the year thank you air high five right there you go air <laughs> high five here on this uh, socially distance broadcast here again with uh, karen barefoot i'm mike vaccaro thanks for joining us it's uh seahawk women's basketball great start to the season again the conference season right around the corner Love it. Could be a banner year. That's one of those things you hear and you can't help but get excited. Now, as we mentioned, team has had six non-conference games to this point, currently post a 3-3 three and three mark. Now, hopefully you've had a chance to watch some of those games, as Coach just mentioned. But if you didn't, not to worry, we've got you covered. We've got some highlights to start the young season. Ooh, round of Rickman. Oh, good. Oh, Sonoma Downs. 
downs. Throws it up and a late foul on Rodriguez will give her an and one opportunity. Ball will slip right back out. She made a step in. Wow, what a three there by Deja Powell, the transfer from the Tar Heels. And to Mitchells. And Lagister alters a shot, but not going to stop. Zanotica down. McMillan three. And she's hit it. We're from Jacksonville, North Carolina. Will be in our way, but she knows and she feels she can get around and still get an opportunity at the rim. High off the glass, McMillan drops it in. It stays with UNCW. And great inbound play up and in, and a foul. Camille Downs owns that one. Pull it away. Whitfield, outlet pass to Jones, and no foul. Now, Zanotica down, and she goes off the top of the square, drops it in for three, and just like that, it's a three-point game. It's in and out by Piccolino. Here come the Seahawks trying to take our score that, that, that is ties the game, and Hookback's going to bring within one to NCG in the third. They have 22 points currently and are shooting much better, 50% from the three-point range, 43% as that ball is up and in by McMillan. That time adjustments. Ronnie Johnson decides to take the three, no good. Outlet pass to Powell. Gives her an easy basket. UNCW had 18 points or 16 points. Maybe it was 18 points at halftime. They've got 26 here in this second or third quarter. And that ball was thrown away. And the Seahawks making Kennesaw State pay for mistakes. Webster stepping all the way through Kennesaw State defense and puts it up for the first point in the fourth quarter. Stack screen. She was able to get the proper depth that she needed to come over and cut that play off. What a great play there by Taylor Webster, Washington, D.C. native. Webster off the dribble. Mitchells. Nice stroke. Love it, love it, love it. Now, hopefully there's plenty more highlights to come, especially with CAA action getting started on Saturday. Now, as you heard earlier from Coach Barefoot, now she's surrounded by talent and experience in that coach's office. So with that in mind, why don't we go ahead and, well, let's meet the coaches and hear what they're looking forward to this year. Hello, my name is Tina Martin. I'm an assistant coach here at UNCW. I've been here for the past three years. Uh, I first got into coaching uh, when I went to Seton Hall University as a graduate assistant in the Big East Conference. Uh, spent about a decade there and then became a head coach at the University of Delaware and currently here in my position at UNCW. I've enjoyed coaching this team tremendously. They're a lot of fun. We've got some outstanding freshmen. We've got some juniors who have contributed um, and a senior in Carol Ann Busick who's done an outstanding job so far this season. Uh, really excited about their development. My favorite part of coaching is development and teaching, getting in the gym every single day. I primarily work with the post players, uh, do a lot of post up work and running the floor, catching the basketball, footwork, shooting the basketball and read and reaction type of drills, um, as well as I do work with the guards. Overall, it's been a great experience and I look forward to helping the Seahawks do very, very well in the CAA this coming year. I really enjoy helping this team and these players improve both on and off the court. Academically, we spend a lot of time helping them, uh, scheduling with their classes, as well as making sure they're doing all the papers they need to do, um, they're doing well in their tests. Uh, we consider ourselves life coaches, so we spend a lot of time helping them overall, socially, academically, and of course on the basketball floor. Um, it's a great experience to be here at UNCW because of all the things that UNCW offers both academically and socially. Um, from a basketball standpoint, I feel like these players have really improved just from the beginning of the year. They're getting better and better. And as we head towards conference play, there'll be many challenges, but I know that our freshmen will step up, our seniors will step up, and this team is really hungry to do well and play well overall over these next few months. My name is Jocelyn Floyd. I'm from Washington, PA. It's about half hour outside of Pittsburgh, PA, um, and I actually went to school at Duquesne University, which is in Pittsburgh. Um, went there for four years, um, was coached under Susie McConnell, and I think that's where I got into coaching um, in college. I've 
honestly never gave coaching a thought before that until I got in college and then we had to work camps and we would coach the younger girls and I just really took a, a, a loving to it um, and just being able to help them and, and work on different um, drills with them and just get them through the day. It really stuck with me and I think that's why I got into coaching um, mainly. Um, then after that graduated, won overseas, played in Germany. Um, then I came back and I got into coaching at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Division II school, um, had great success there with Tom McConnell as the head coach. I was the assistant coach um, for five years with him. Did really well there um, and then now I'm here at, um, with, I'm the assistant women's basketball coach and uh, this is my first year um, and this team has just been great accepting me and the other coaches. Um, kind of a new staff we have together. Coach Barefoot and Coach Martin have been here together and, and just joining them, I mean, it's, it's been great. I've learned so much already. Um, and then Coach Matt coming in from the men's side, I mean, he's been great. And then Coach Jenny DeGraff um, coming from Boston and everything that they bring to the team, it's, we all come and just bring a little something different. For me, I work with the post a lot or, or with the guards. We're kind of interchangeable, mainly the guards. Um, and then also I'll keep track of, of during the games the offensive plays that we do or what works on offense and what we can use. Um, so we all just kind of have our roles and I mean some sometimes they change day to day and uh, game to game but um, that's why I think that we work so well together. We're just we're just able to just keep flowing and keep working. My name is Matt Lynch. I'm an assistant coach for the women's basketball team here at UNCW. This is my fourth year at UNCW. I spent the last three years with the men's program and then was able to make the jump over to the women's side this year. Um, I've spent time at Youngstown State with their men's team and then Miami, Ohio with their women's team. So I've kind of been on both sides of the game and, and just enjoy basketball. Um, I got into coaching because of the relationships. Uh, I just enjoy helping young people try and uh, achieve their dreams through uh, being on a team. And uh, I just love the collectiveness of being uh, in a group and working together towards a goal. Um, I really love this, this program and uh, this team. We've got a young team with a bunch of great kids, um, a really talented staff. You have you know, Coach, Coach Barefoot who has all the energy in the world and then follow with Coach Martin, tons of experience and then uh, Jenny and jo Jocelyn both just bring, kind of round out our group. They both played at the highest level and so that's huge for our team to you know, be able to learn from two people that have already done it before. So um, I'm excited for the year, and uh, go Seahawks. Um, my name is Jenny DeGraff, and I am from Springboro, Ohio. Um, I just started as the Director of Operations here at UNCW um, a few months ago, actually. Uh, I played here when I was um, in college. I started um, my career at Penn State. Uh, I then transferred after my sophomore year and landed here at UNCW. Um, I loved the beach, I loved the campus, I loved the opportunities that UNCW offered me. Um, so I continued my career here. I got to play for uh, Coach Barefoot actually for my senior season, which was an awesome experience and um, graduated in 2018. And then I left and was a graduate assistant at Boston College for the last two years, which was also an awesome opportunity I got to work under some great people, work with some great people, and um, had a really fun run last year. I then returned, like I said, a few months ago to UNCW and have had an awesome experience thus far. Um, it's had its challenges, its ups and downs with COVID, uh, like every other team is experiencing right now. And um, I'm just so appreciative of everyone that has put a hand in this and has had the chance to have our season go on and have us play games. and. It's been a really fun but challenging opportunity, like I said, and um, I'm looking forward to growing with this team and having the opportunity to be back here with uh, Coach Barefoot and learn from her um, on the coaching side instead of as a player. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that and looking forward to learning from the other coaches. We all have a little bit of a different background um, on and off the court, so I'm looking forward to hearing from, from them some more, learning from them, and um, having the opportunity to grow professionally in my career as well and 
working with this team. I'm, I'm super excited for that. Um, these, this is a great group of girls and I'm, I'm looking forward to um, being a part of their growth and watching them grow as young, young student athletes on and off the floor. As the Director of Operations, uh, I pretty much have my hands in, in everything, which is fun, but can be a little challenging at times. Um, I have the opportunity to work with travel, have um, all the hotels, all the food, make sure we are where we need to be, uh, coordinate with the other team. Um, I also do a lot of stuff here uh, on game day. I work close with our SID. I work obviously very closely with um, Coach Barefoot and the rest of the staff. I work with Michaela um, and people in compliance. Uh, pretty much everybody, I do a little bit of everything. Um, and just pretty much make, make sure all the behind the scenes things are done and then the coaching staff takes over and uh, gets us the wins on the court. All right, well, while it is great to know who's on the coaching staff, we know the re real reason you're here tonight is actually to see who's on the team. So I think it's time. Let's go ahead and meet the players. Um, I chose USCW because I felt like it was the best fit for me academically and uh, athletically. If I wasn't playing basketball, I'd play soccer. Um, when my basketball career is over, I most likely want to become a college basketball coach. A um, fun fact about myself is I'm one of seven children. I chose UNCW because I loved the coaching staff and I loved Wilmington and I just thought it was the best fit. If I wasn't playing basketball, I'd probably play volleyball. After my basketball career, I think I want to be a strength and conditioning coach at a, any college. Fun fact about me is that my parents' anniversary is on the same day as my birthday. Um, I chose UNCW because of the coaching staff. I love the people in Wilmington and the beach, of course. Um, if I wasn't playing basketball, I think I'd probably play soccer. When basketball is finished, I would really want to own my own business. Um, a fun fact is that I'm an only child. I chose UNCW because they gave me the opportunity to play Division One basketball and it was by the beach. If I wasn't playing basketball, I would dedicate all my time to competitive surfing. When I finish playing basketball, I hope to coach basketball. Um, a fun fact about Sally Vick is she likes to knit and embroider and sew in her free time. Um, I chose NCW because when I came on my official year, the coaches were very energetic and they seemed like they were very dedicated to win, so that persuaded me a lot. I wasn't playing basketball, I'd definitely be playing softball because I fell in love with it when I was little, but I was a little better at basketball, so I switched. Um, after I finished basketball, I'm not entirely sure, but I know I want to like help people in some way and try to like, change the world, make an impact, so something like that. Um, a fun fact is I'm addicted to shoes. I buy them everywhere I go. <laughs> Um, I chose UNCW because one, it's close to home. Um, I'm already used to the environment, so like um, the people, and I love the beach, so that's one of the main reasons why I chose it. Um, if I didn't play basketball, I would definitely play volleyball. I played in high school, so it would definitely be volleyball. After basketball, um, I want to go to grad school, get my PhD in psychology. I want to be a psychologist and then work my way up to either like a clinical psychologist or a psychiatrist. A uh, fun fact is, okay, all of my family, we literally live right beside each other, and um, our street address is Memory Lane, and people think it's funny. I chose UCW because the coaches that are pretty me made me feel like this is my home and I belong, and then also further into my signing day, the players made me feel like I really, really belong, and this could be my possible family. If I weren't playing basketball, I would play soccer. I see myself in 10, 20 years, probably overseas playing basketball or working for the government, honestly. <laughs> a fun fact about myself is I can dribble the ball, a soccer ball on my feet. The soccer was my first sport before basketball. I chose UNCW because I like the school, I like the program, and oh my god, the campus, the campus is so great. And I felt like it was the best decision for me to get away from home. I didn't want to be too close to home, so yeah. If I didn't play basketball, I would play softball because I played while I was younger and it was great. I'm good at it. Um, when I finish playing basketball, hopefully I get to play overseas or WNBA. Both of those are my dreams, so hopefully they work. A fun fact about me is not only can I play basketball, I can dance, I can draw. 
I could cut hair, I make music. I chose UNCW because of the relationship I have with Coach Barefoot. I was originally committed to ODU, and once she left, I decided to come over here with her. If I didn't play basketball, I think I would play volleyball because I feel like it's still somewhat of an athletic sport. When my basketball career is finished, I want to still remain somewhere involved in sports, whether it's being a trainer, being a, a strength coach, or anything that has to do with being around the sport. A fun fact about Deja um, is that I'm very goofy and I have a really bubbly personality. Um, I chose UNCW because I felt that family atmosphere and it just felt like home. If I wasn't playing basketball, I would be playing softball just because my dad is a softball baseball fanatic and yeah, he would have taught me how to play. Um, after my basketball career, I see myself being a therapist, helping people with their mental and yeah, just making the world a better place. A fun fact about Micah, uh, uh, I'm getting sane, kind of, I guess. I chose UNCW because it's close to home and close to the beach. If I didn't play basketball, I would probably definitely be playing softball. Um, after basketball in college, I plan to find a job in the sustainability field. Um, a fun fact about me, probably most people know, but I have a cat named Gus and he is basically my whole world. I chose UNCW because UNCW had my master's program, it was close to home, and it was full of great opportunities. If I wasn't playing basketball, I would be playing either soccer or volleyball. Once I am done playing basketball in the spring, I want to travel the world with my family and friends before I start my full-time job in accounting in the fall. One thing people don't know about me is that I can juggle. <laughs> just an awesome crew. Now, from the sounds of it, just the last three people alone, we've got someone that can juggle, someone that's got a cat named Gus that they love, can't live without, and someone that can sing, kind of. I love it. Now, really one of our favorite parts of this show is being able to give you a glimpse into the lives of the players to know who they really are and what it's like to be a student athlete. Now, we actually were lucky enough to follow the team while they took to the road to start their season and thought it would be great to give you a glimpse into the life of a student athlete on the road. Take a look.
Spotify, you feel me? Can we go in there now? Is it ready for it? Or yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Let's get to work. All right, sounds good. If it's off a rebound, we need to really go into our secondary drag. We really need to carry the ball, be patient on the screen, the post player, set it up. Everybody knows that you have to be tough minded tonight. So that's what we talk about having that boxer mentality. You have to be tough minded. Chasing down rebounds, passion, put it out there because guess what you do when you rebound? You get transition. 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 Which we all know their weakness is what? Transition. 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 Yes. That's right. Yeah. You're not going to be perfect, but you got to play foxhole defense, which is having each other's back. Okay? Have each other's back. Okay? Let's get a lot of yin yangs, which means that if you don't do something good, what do you got to do? Get it back. Get it back. Do something good on the other end. Play good defense. Get a tip from behind. Do whatever. Let the play go. Yeah. We're going to need everybody tonight. Because when you're on the road, you got to have that warrior, fighter mentality. Right? 
Let's go out there and play Seahawk basketball. Let's work together. Let's be coachable. Let's be together all the time. Any questions? Mm -mm. All right, let's go. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. Family. and you own that tempo. It's just you guys understand when you're playing a team like that too, every possession matters. Let's stay together, y'all, okay? Th th this is why you play non-conference. This is why you play non-conference to learn this, all right? And we know that it doesn't matter. We have to own the pace from the beginning of the game. Together on three, one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. It's honestly probably one of my favorite parts of the entire show. It's just that look behind the curtain to see how things were really running. And again, I can't say thank you enough to Coach Barefoot for letting us in, letting us follow them around. It's pretty cool. And obviously, a big thank you to you for being with us for the last, what is this, about 48 minutes to this point. Now, before we go, I want to remind you about a few things. First, don't forget about the fan cutouts. I mentioned them in the beginning of the show. These are awesome. All you have to do is log on to uncwsports.com slash STS. Now, of course, the STS, that stands for Sustain the Seahawks. Like so many out there right now, our athletic program really needs your help. Now, there's a few different ways you can give. Now, first, you can log Log on to uncwsports.com slash Seahawk Club or give us a call 910-962-2731. Now that's going to do it for me. But before we go, given that it is New Year's Eve, it's that's upon us right now, we thought we'd you know leave you with some of the well resolutions from the team. With that in mind, we'll see you next time and go Seahawks. Um, my New Year's resolution is to graduate and find a job. Um, my New Year's resolution is to eat a lot healthier. My New Year's resolution is to get all A's next semester and hopefully win a conference championship. My New Year's resolution, um, stay healthy and be more active and probably lose a little bit more weight than I already have. Uh, my New Year's resolution is to find a better major that I'm more passionate about. So. Uh, my New Year's resolution is to not drink soda anymore. My New Year's resolution is to eat healthier. My New Year's re resolution is to put myself in better situations that I have in the past and to learn and move on. My New Year's resolution is to be very intentional about being selfless all year. And my New Year's resolution would be to give up chips because they're my favorite and I eat them too much. Uh, my New Year's resolution is to eat better. My New Year's resolution for 2021 is to say yes to more things and to be open to new opportunities.